We have air. It enters a two-stage compressor operating at steady state at an inlet temperature and an inlet pressure. The overall pressure ratio across the stages, there's, so there's two of them, so the total overall pressure ratio is 20, and each stage operates isentropically. Intercooling occurs at constant pressure at the value that minimizes the compressor work input. Let me go ahead and make a sketch at this point. So we have a compressor, we'll call it compressor 1. Then we have an intercooler, and then we'll have the second compressor, compressor 2. And so we have air flowing through the system like this. And if you wanted to, we could give numbers. We could call this state 1, call this state 2, call this state 3, and then call this state 4. And we've been given a couple pieces of information. The pressure ratio, P4, divided by P1 is 20. So the total pressure ratio is 20. And that it's isentropic, so S equal to a constant and S equal to a constant for those compressors. And that there's intercooling such that the uh, inlet pressure 1 and temperature 1 after the intercooler, the temperature at 3 is back to the temperature at 1, which was, the temperature was 310 Kelvin. All right. We were given that this is uh, 98 kPa. And we can even come over here. I didn't leave enough room, but let me say P4 right here. Then we're going to contrast it with P3 which is the same as P2. And then T3 is, T2 is different. All right, a um, little jumbled up there. Maybe I could have organized it better. But let's say, what is the pressure at 4? Well, the pressure at 4 is 20 times 98, so that's 1960 kPa. And we're, we don't know the pressure at 2 or 3, which is the um, intercooler pressure. Now let's go back and continue reading. When the temperature of the air entering each compressor stage is the same, which is true for this condition, the minimum work or the minimum total compressor work input per unit of mass flowing occurs when the pressure ratio is the same across each stage. So they're saying that the W total for compressor 1 and compressor 2 and that's a lowercase w that's because it's per kilogram of air flowing through is a minimum is a minimum when that you know I'm just repeating what it said but when it, it has the same temperature going into each compressor stage and the same pressure ratio so the pressure ratio P2 divided by P1 is equal to P4 divided by P3. That's when you get the minimum. Okay. Um, let's continue to read down here. Assume ideal gas behavior with K of 1.4. When you see this K of 1.4, that means do not use the air tables in the textbook. Do not assume well, assume that it's a constant specific heat because you're given a constant value of K. And so you neglect uh, the temperature dependence of the specific heats. And when you see this 1.4, it's a red flag. It's basically saying, oh, it's basically a cold air standard analysis. Okay. So let's continue to read. Determine the work per unit mass of air flowing through the two compressor stages in kilojoules per kilogram of the airflow? And the answer would be 333 kilojoules per kilogram. Well, maybe I should have done a better job of uh, setting it up, but this problem, you know, maybe with the table, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and, and work through this problem. So somebody would say, if the pressure ratio across the first compressor stage is equal to the pressure ratio across the second compressor stage. And you know the total compressor ratio, pressure ratio, 
then what is each of these? Well, you do a little bit of math, you find that that's equal to the square root of 20. And so we compute that the pressure ratio is a 4.47214, or just leave it square root of 20. Okay. Well, can I get the temperature going out at 2? The temperature going out at 2 would be calculated by the isentropic relationship, whoops, P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K exponent. Well, where did that equation come from? Well, it, it came out of Chapter 6 in the study of entropy, when you have an ideal gas, constant specific heats, or constant K, and you uh, have isentropic compression. So we can substitute numbers. We know the temperature, it's um, 310, the pressure ratio we just calculated, square root of 20. The K is 1.4, and we calculate that T2 is equal to 475.6 Kelvin. You keep more digits in the calculator, but there you go. Likewise, you go over and you say, what's the temperature at 4? Well, because you have the same inlet temperature and the same pressure ratio for the second presser, it's the same, 475.6 Kelvin. Okay. Well, now that I know those inlet and outlet temperatures, I can do an energy balance around, let's say, the first compressor. So energy balance around the compressor number one. And it's steady state, and so we have the heat transfer flowing in, Q into the compressor. I'm going to stay with the sign convention on this. The work flowing out, and then you have the mass flow rate. So Q in minus work out. And then you have the change in the enthalpy, the enthalpy in at 1 minus the enthalpy out at 2. I divided, I, you put it on a rate, and then you divide by m dot, and this is where you what you get. So for this problem, the compressor is well insulated, and so that work for the first compressor, specific work, would be the enthalpy in at 1 minus enthalpy exiting at 2, and we say, well, we use constant specific heat, so it's C sub P times T1 minus T2. And you say, well, what is our T inlet? We know that. What is our T exit? We know that. Well, you need, need to know our specific heats. C sub P is equal to K times R divided by K minus 1 which comes in using the constant specific heats of like 1.005 with some change, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, um, where did this equation come from? Well, out of our textbook, it came out of equation 3.47, so it's out of chapter 3. And so it's a nice simple expression to get the constant value of C sub P if you're given K. So all you really need to know is K, then you get C sub P this way. So we can substitute and we find that the work for the first compressor uh, comes in at a negative because the, the sign convention, negative 166.4 kilojoules per kilogram. Now you do the same steps for the second compressor and it will be the, exactly the same. You have the same inlet temperature, the same outlet temperature, the same pressure ratio. It's negative 166.4 kilojoules per kilogram. So when you get the total, W for the both of them, C1 and C2, just add those together, you get negative 332.7 kilojoules per kilogram or the work one for the second first and second compressor is around 333 I'll keep a negative sign on it kilojoules per kilogram indicating that negative that it's a work into each of those compressors so that's the total 
the total work per unit mass for the two stages of the compressor.